What's up guys? So we're back exploring again. So this is another really like unique spot. So we just saw, uh, I don't know if there's an easier way in here, but we just like had to hike through all this brush. Like <laughs> we're all tangled up in it. It's really horrible. Wait, just to recap, not only was there an easier way, but the grounds were basically open to the public. We even saw a lady walking with a stroller. But check this out. This is a old abandoned airfield. And there's also something else that's really cool in this spot. How was that walk to the... That was a miserable <laughs> walk. Look at my feet. There's a puddle in there. The insides of these aircraft control towers are heavily vandalized and have been completely ripped apart by scrappers. Construction for the air station started in 1941, and the following year it was commissioned by the United States Navy. In World War II, this government airspace would be used to provide support for anti-submarine blimp operations. You can see in this photo the large circular blimp landing mat. two blimp hangers on the facility, and one of them was absolutely massive. The Navy would use these blimps, also called K-ships, to carry out night missions. The benefit of these K-ships was you were able to fly up high above the water at night, and then using the radar system they could detect enemy submarines off the coast. Because of how slow these blimps were, they were able to detect numerous enemy ships and carry out rescue missions. They had also been equipped with two depth bombs to attack against the submarines. In August 1945, the runway was downgraded from the Naval Air Station to a Naval Air Facility and was mainly used to store extra military surplus that was awaiting disposition. The two large hangars held a large number of aircraft from the previous war, and in 1952 they added two more diagonal runways and built the modern control towers that we are in today, which only one of the towers was fully completed and operational, the other was never finished. At this point it was reactivated as a fully fledged naval air station. In 1966 the historic massive steel blimp hangar was demolished and replaced with a newer hangar. The Naval Air Station would stay operational until its final closure in 1984. Floor by floor, everything looks pretty much the same. It seems like every floor would have a couple of offices and there was an elevator that you could take to the top floor.
As you can see from all the graffiti, a lot of people have been to the top of this tower, but I wonder how many of these people actually realized how much history is tied to this air station. You can only imagine these gigantic blimps coming out of the sky to land just beyond these towers. The second hangar and some of the other structures on the airfield have been designed using mainly all wood construction because at the time they wanted to save as many resources as possible for weapons, ammunition, and vehicles. This is part of the reason why most of these structures are gone now and weren't really designed to last. So we just finished exploring the towers. So now we are on our way to check out those houses. In 2016, in the middle of the old runway, they built two different staging sets for the movie The Patriot, starring Mark Wahlberg. It was a movie about the tragic Boston Marathon bombings of 2013. They filmed two scenes here, which were the finish line scene and the shooting at the end. It's amazing the detail they put into these movie sets, even though it's just going to be a glimpse in the background. After filming the movie, the developer that owns the old airspace bought the set from the production company in hopes that it would be used for more productions in the future. By 2018, the movie set had significant damage and too much vandalism to ever be used again, and it only got worse as time went by. Surprisingly though, there is a hangar that is still being used for major productions, including a Netflix movie that releases this year. they demolished what was left of the movie set. This must have been such a strange thing to stumble upon, just a half-built neighborhood in the middle of an abandoned runway. I found this explorer very interesting. I imagine a lot of people came here just to take a picture of these strange apocalyptic-like buildings, and didn't even realize how much history is based right on this same runway. I'm happy we got a chance to explore and document this before it was inevitably demolished. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe. We will be releasing new content every two weeks. Thanks for watching. <laughs>